What are building Legos and drawing have in common? Let's find out. Welcome to Art 101. My name is Mr. Franklin and it is great having you here today. I'd like to extend a big welcome to the students of Garden Grove Unified School District for joining me for today and for future weeks as we explore the elements and principles of design as well as create some fun art projects while we do it. When we build with Legos, we need individual blocks to create our structure. The same goes for when we create artwork. We use the elements of design to build up our piece. Line, shape, color, form, value, space, texture. They're all important in making an interesting piece of artwork. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on line. Let me show you what I mean. All right. Um, what I'd like you to do right now is all you're going to need is a, a pencil and a piece of paper. And for this, um, let's not use our, uh, our good paper. Just go ahead and find any type of scratch paper. Maybe it's the back of an envelope or uh, just something you're not going to use. And um, we're going to experiment with some lines. So um, let's, we're going to go ahead and just practice. Um, I'm going to use a marker um, just so you can see it a little better, but pencil's fine for this. So if we think of line, what are we, what kind of lines are we talking about? Um, straight line, right? You can do a straight line there. Um, and sometimes our lines are uh, horizontal, which means going sideways from left to right. Sometimes they are going up and down. We call that vertical. Sometimes we have lines that are What's this called? Do you guys recognize that? Kind of a zigzag. Sometimes we have a rolling line. What else can you think of? How about um, some curved lines? Now notice these are interrupted, right? These are interrupted. They're little, little half circles that create a line. How about a crazy kind of a scribble line, right? Or uh, what about a flowing line? What about some spirals? Sometimes we have diagonal lines. You put two diagonals together, you make an X. Sometimes we can make little dash marks, interrupted lines, almost like little ants crawling around. Now this is a dash mark that's making a spiral. So we kind of combine the two there. What do you think this looks like? That's an interesting pattern there. Reminds me of the top of a castle. Sometimes our lines are thin, and sometimes we can have markers that have a thin point, like that, or a pencil. But even if we have one size marker or pencil, we can create a thin line, and then a thick line, and even fill in more to make a thicker line, and we call this varying the thickness of the line. Sometimes we work with computer programs, and they call that the stroke. The stroke is the thickness of the line. I bet you could come up with some different types of line that I'm not even thinking of. Sometimes we make lines out of objects like circles. Sometimes we make lines uh, look at this. I'll show you this for a second. I'm gonna make a rectangle and I'm gonna make another rectangle. Can you see the space in between the two rectangles? I didn't even touch that, but that forms a line. That's negative space. So that's a line without even creating a line. 
Pretty interesting, huh? Lines are so important. They're everywhere. Take a look. Go outside, walk around your home. They're in architecture, they're in nature. Lines are an important part in our artwork. I'd like to share with you a book by Candace Whitman called Lines That Wiggle. I think you're going to enjoy it. Lines That Wiggle by Candace Whitman, illustrations by Steve Wilson. Lines that wiggle, lines that bend. Wavy lines from end to end. Lines that tickle, lines that sprout. Bugs have lines that stick right out. Lines to trap, lines to hide. Two lines running side by side. Lines that curve, lines that curl. Underwater lines that swirl. Lines that crisscross, lines that mend. Lines with doggies at the end. Lines that scurry, lines in threes. Lines in leaves that grow on trees. Lines that twist, lines that sway. Lines that swish the flies away. Zigzag lines light up the sky. Rainbow lines are way up high. Lines are everywhere you look. Find some lines not in this book. The end. Wasn't that a great story? Lines are so important. They're everywhere. We don't just create them with pencil and pen on paper. They're outside, they're inside, they're in architecture, they're in nature. You just have to look around. This week, go outside, take a look. Go in your house, go in your bedroom, see how many different types of lines you can find. I'll bet you'd be surprised. Are you guys ready to create some artwork? Let's get started. For this project, we are going to create an abstract piece of artwork using line, different types of line. We're also going to use some color here and there, um, but, but the main focus of this project is line. Here's what you're going to need for this project. I'm going to need a pencil, a pen, a marker, and some crayons. First step, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have our, our practice page of all our lines so we have that handy to get ideas from. Well, let's go ahead and get started. now. You might want to use your pencil for this first and then trace over with your marker when you're ready and done with the design. I'm going to go ahead and just start off with the marker so you can see it a little bit easier. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put a dot in each corner of our paper. Alright, you see that? So it's a little bit from the corner, about a, about a half an inch coming in from the corner on all the sides. Now what I'm going to do, you know, if you have a ruler and you want to use a ruler, that's fine. But I don't think you really need it. You can just kind of freehand it, and it's okay if it's not perfectly straight. We're going to go ahead and draw a line from this dot to this dot. Let's turn our paper. Notice how when I'm drawing my line, I'm starting from the top and I'm just I'm keeping my wrist straight. I'm holding the paper with my other hand and then I'm just drawing my hand straight down, keeping my wrist straight. And that'll give me a pretty, a pretty uh, even straight line. Let's try it again. Put my, put my tip of my pen on the dot and just go straight down. Now remember, if it's not perfectly straight, that's perfectly okay. It's, it gives your artwork a little character here. Alright, 
So now we have a little bit of a border going on here. The next step is we're going to draw a line. And for this first line, we're going to draw a continuous line. Now a continuous line is a line that never stops. Well, it doesn't stop in, in, in between your drawing. So I'm going to start with, a, I'm going to put a, my pen down and then I'm just going to do some loop-de-loops. And it's okay to cross over. Now, do you have to draw your line exactly like mine? No, I'd like you to draw it however you feel it's, it, it, it looks and feels right to you on your paper. Just keep your pen down and don't lift up your pen until you're done drawing your line. And you should fill up the whole page. Um, obviously there's some space around the outside of mine, but for the most part, the middle has a lot of design in there. There's not just a little design over here and a lot of white space. We want to fill up the page as much as possible. All right, now we are gonna create, by the way, I didn't mention this, but this is just regular copy paper. This is just um, paper you'd get out of your printer. If you have a printer, a computer printer at home, so it's nothing fancy. All right, so next, we're gonna draw some other lines. Now, what kind of lines uh, might, we, might we have? Well, let's, let's, think, let's look at our page and get some ideas. So we have some, we have some zigzag, we have some uh, little, scribbly line, some curved line. So how about, let's try a curved line. Let's start over here on this edge and we'll go ahead and do almost like the waves in the ocean, just up and down curved. Now, let's go ahead and, uh, oh, I've got an idea. How about, we, uh, how about we create a line using dots? We're gonna start about halfway on the page and then I'm just gonna draw some dots evenly spaced and I'm gonna make a line out of it. Can you picture like little ants crawling around? Ants like to crawl in, in, a, in a single file line. It's kind of like that. So we have our dots going across there. Now let's see what we can add. How about some zigzag? And now let's do some, let's do some zigzags that are gonna cross this first line that we made. I'm gonna turn my paper. Sometimes it's nice to be able to turn your paper to be able to get to where you want. To, to draw them or it makes it a little easier. Here's my zigzag. And it's okay if it crosses my other line. And I'm gonna go all the way across the paper there. All right. Now, let's see. Oh, how about some, how about some scribbly lines? Scribbly lines. Sometimes we call this scumbling. And, and I just go, look at that. Can I make noises while you do it? Right, and we're, we're gonna make a line with our scumbling. It's gonna go all the way through and go to the other side. All right, it's getting interesting. Oh, um, you know you know what's a neat line is that I like is called a scallop. And these scallop um, pattern lines, um, I, I think of fish scales. You ever seen a fish that has little scales on them? Let's see if we can make some. Let's see, where would be a good place for a scallop line? Let's turn our paper and see if there's any empty spots here that might, how about over here? We'll turn it all the way around and we'll go ahead and, go ahead and make our scallop line. And now we're gonna do another row over here. How about one more? All right. Okay, so here we go. We got something going here. Um, how about some dash marks? follows the line. These are lines that make up a line. It's not interesting. Okay, so what else? What can I think of? How about some dash marks that follow this curve? Look at this. These dash marks are going the other way, but watch how it follows the curve of my original line. You see that? Now 
look at this. Look what I'm doing here. This is almost like the stitching of a quilt or the stitching of some fabric with some needle and thread. Any of you have any anybody in your house that likes to sew? These are little stitches that might might uh, you might see in, in some of their work. All right, let's keep going one more time. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Why don't we uh, Why don't we take a stop? Uh, why don't we stop for a minute and look at our piece? And why don't we just kind of see if there's if this piece is balanced? What do I mean by that? I mean, is there a lot of white space somewhere that that is is overly um, unbalanced compared to the other portions? I'm thinking maybe up here. Up here seems compared to down here. There might be some empty space that we need to fill in. So let's think. Let's think of a couple other. How about I got an idea. How about what if we did something like this? This is an interesting kind of a line, almost like a vine with some flowers. There's really all kinds of lines you could do. And we'll just kind of continue it back there. That evens it up a little bit. How about we? Um, over in this corner over here. Let's make a little larger circles. What's a circle? A circle is just a curved line that runs into its, itself, right? We just start curving it and it runs right into itself. It makes a circle. All right. And um, how about we do one more? Let's stick some lines. Something like that. Okay, I think we're good. Now, once we finish the majority of our lines, I think we need to look at it and, and, and continue to see if it's balanced. And then we're gonna fill in some color. But before we fill in color, I would like to uh, take a chance to fill in some black with our marker. So as you, as you notice, when our lines cross each other, they form shapes and that's what lines do when lines either run into each other or cross each other they form shapes now sometimes we think of shapes as geometric shapes and that would be like a, a triangle or a circle or a rectangle our basic shapes but sometimes there's irregular shapes and we have irregular um, irregular shapes we might found it in in nature but let's see like here's a shape right here see that let's see if we can just color this in Darken it in black with our marker. Notice, notice how I'm coloring this in. I'm not scribbling like this. I'm not going like this. I'm kind of, I'm kind of going like a lawnmower. Have you ever seen a lawnmower? When the person mows the lawn, they go in straight lines, and they make sure they cover every single inch of the grass to make sure all the grass gets cut evenly. Well, we're doing something similar. And when I get to the edge, I can go the other way and clean it up and make our shape nice and dark. So now we have, we have something called contrast. We have the dark contrast compared to the light contrast, dark and light. And so when you see our thick lines and our thin lines, you see some, some shapes that are darkened in, some that stay light. It's, it gives us variety. It gives us variety. It makes our artwork a little more interesting. All right, here we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in a few more shapes that I see. I'm not gonna fill in everything black. I'm just gonna fill in a few around the paper to, uh, and, make, and, and try to make it as balanced as possible. So I'm gonna do that now. I wanna show you something here. You notice how I made a little mistake there. I, I, I took my pen and I drew outside the line. Whenever that happens, I don't want you to get frustrated. I don't want you to tear up your paper. As artists, mistakes happen all the time, but we can make those mistakes. We can use those as mistakes um, to be successful, right? We can make them into successes. So let's see what we can do. How we can we fix this little mark here? So if I'm taking this, I'm gonna go ahead and, and widen this shape here. Let's just widen it out and we'll bring it across. See that? I just made the shape a little bit bigger and then I can go ahead and fill in there. Okay. A lot of times your mistakes can be some of your most interesting uh, 
the interesting part of your artwork. So uh, don't ever get discouraged about that. Sometimes, you know, I like to look at my artwork and I kind of squint my eyes. I kind of um, just kind of squint my eyes a little bit. And so I look through my eyelashes and I can see uh, things get kind of blurry, but all I can see are the contrast. And it helps me to see if my paper is balanced. It helps me to see if my paper is balanced. I'm going to go ahead and blur this, this paper right here so you get the idea. And you can kind of tell if there's something that's, that needs to be uh, some more dark area that needs to be added. When I do that, I'm seeing something over here that needs. I see this to be a little bit of a, of a white area that needs to be um, having some dark areas filled in. So let's go ahead and take this. We'll make a spiral. Thicken it up a little bit. And I think that helps. That helps a lot. Okay. All right. Good. So now we're going to go ahead and take our crayons. Now, and you know, I'm going to take the black. I'm going to put the black aside because we already have black markers, so we don't need any more of that. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some colors, and I'm going to look at my shapes, and I'm going to see if there's any of the lines that I made that created an enclosed area or enclosed shape. And I see this one right here, and I'm going to go ahead and fill that in now oh this is interesting look at this can you see this do you see the the pattern that's coming off the texture see that texture right here this is something we're going to talk about later on texture uh, in weeks to come but I want you to see that now I have some matte board that, that I put on my desk just to keep the background dark and it's actually picked up that texture and added it to my artwork now, I kind of like it, so I'm going to leave it. If I didn't want that texture, I could take the mat board away and, and make sure I'm drawing on a smooth surface. But it's kind of nice. I kind of like the texture. And like I said, we'll talk more about texture because that's an important, important part of artwork as well, which we'll talk about a little later on. All right, so I'm going... Remember our lawnmower. Keep... It filled in, try to avoid the scribbles. All right, so we have one there. Now, while I have the orange, let's go around and just kind of fill in a few other piece, uh, places with orange. Uh, let's do one more. This little area right here looks good. Okay, now it's up to you how many colors you want to use for this. You could use uh, two, three. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, I don't know we'll see how it goes let's I'm gonna go ahead and pick the red next red and I'm gonna go ahead and color this area in now are we gonna color every single area of the paper no we're just gonna color some key areas and we're gonna leave some other areas white This is called an abstract piece of art. It's, there's nothing in here that actually looks like something. It's just a bunch of shapes, irregular shapes and lines and color that create an interesting piece of artwork. Now let's take a look. Here's, here's one I did earlier. Let's see if we can back this out a little bit. And you can see the, the two here. They're, they look similar, right? They're, they're similar. They have similar types of lines and some shapes, but they're different. There's different, there's different, uh, different shapes in there, different ideas. So I think you're gonna, you're gonna find that your, your piece is gonna look similar to the people in your class, but uh, you're gonna find that it looks different too. If you have any questions or you'd like to share some of your artwork with me, feel free to send me an email. Keep drawing, and we'll see you soon.